If you're also waiting for the launch of the new Pimax Crystal Super, then this video is for you. Pimax kicks off the year with a bang by showcasing the Super at the CS in Las Vegas, giving the attendees the opportunity to experience one of the most advanced headsets ever. With ultra high resolution, interchangeable lens and display modules designed for future proofing. What more could you ask for? Let's dive into this video. For reasons perhaps naively incomprehensible to me, the CES, the most renowned consumer electronics fair, takes place in one of the most expensive locations on the planet. For this reason, attending in person is difficult. Still, I didn't want to deprive you of exclusive content. A few days before the fair, I had the chance to chat with Jap Groleman, whom you've likely seen in previous Pimax Frontiers videos. Jap handles public communications for Pimax and we discussed not only the Super but also Pimax as a whole. Over the years, Pimax's software has undergone significant transformations. What started as PyTool has now evolved into Pimax Play, a platform that incorporates numerous community-driven features, including the OpenXR runtime. We asked about the role the community plays in shaping Pimax's products and how closely the company collaborates with enthusiasts who develop plugins and add-ons for their headsets. It became clear that Pimax's size allows it to stay close to its user base while retaining the agility to innovate quickly. Team members like Carol and Calvin are active daily on platforms such as Discord, interacting with users and collecting valuable feedback. Contributions from independent developers have been pivotal. The work of Matteo Bucchianeri, better known as Mbucchia, has significantly enriched not only Pimax's ecosystem, but also the broader VR community. Similarly, tools like the companion app developed by TallyMouse have become indispensable for many users. Even the local dimming settings, a key feature of Pimax headsets, were improved thanks to input from the community. This collaborative relationship has enhanced features and ensured a high level of software stability. We also wanted to delve into the technical aspects. Each Pimax Crystal Super operates at an astounding 3840 by 3840 resolution per eye at 90 Hz, placing immense technical demands. We discussed the challenges of developing a cable capable of handling such high bandwidth and whether today's graphics cards are equipped to process this level of data. It was explained that for models like the Lite and Super, the DisplayPort 1.4 cable provides sufficient bandwidth without issues. However, for the upcoming 12K model, the situation is more complex. The 12K demands even greater bandwidth and current technological limitations present a bottleneck. While future GPUs may support DisplayPort 2.1, the necessary bridge IC for DP to MIP conversion doesn't yet exist. This challenge is not unique to Pimax, but reflects a broader issue in the VR industry. It was also clarified that no technical sacrifices were made in pursuit of aesthetics, even though the headset now features a more compact design. The engineering team adhered to the specification set from the beginning, ensuring that functionality remained uncompromised. While the headset might seem large at first glance, it is not significantly heavier than competitors' products. The focus was on achieving comfort and optimal weight distribution, considered far more important than merely reducing size. When discussing the origins of the Pimax Crystal Super, we learned that there wasn't a single defining moment for its concept. Instead, the Crystal Super represents a natural evolution of Pimax's technology, building on the 8KX which prioritized high resolution and a wide field of view, the Crystal was developed to overcome certain limitations. From there, the Crystal Super and Dream Air were created as specialized iterations catering to different user needs. Given Pimax's diverse product lineup, we were curious about which type of user each headset is best suited for. The Crystal Super is designed for simulation enthusiasts, particularly those into flight or driving simulations. Its stationary focus, combined with aspherical lenses for incredible clarity and uncompromised audio, makes it ideal for these scenarios. Additionally, the interchangeable lens and display body offer versatility for various experiences. The Dream Air, on the other hand, is tailored for more social experiences like VR chat. It delivers high-quality performance without the bulk of simulation-focused devices, making it a great choice for users seeking a lighter, more casual VR experience. Let me make a quick note. For those who don't know, we're talking about a company that employs only a few hundred people, not thousands, as in large multinational corporations. 
As the conversation turned to the future, it became evident that the Crystal Light will be crucial for Pimax in 2025. With stable software and competitive features like upscaling, advanced tracking algorithms, and foveated rendering, the Crystal Light remains one of the most cost-effective HD VR headsets available. Pimax's wide product range ensures there's something for every type of user in 2025. Confidence in its market performance and ability to meet the expectations of both new and experienced VR users is high. As time ran out, we wanted to ask something about the CS event. Lucky attendees will have various opportunities to explore the Crystal Light, which was absent last year. Visitors will be able to try the Pimax Super with the LCD or OLED module and the 60G module. That's all I can share with you before the CES event. I can't wait to get my hands on the Pimax Super to provide you with an in-depth review. You will find a significant discount in the description if you are interested in purchasing any Pimax products. Thanks to Pimax for the opportunity to have this conversation and I'll see you in the next video.